peace and blessings to you. My name is Jerry B. I am the entree musician and so are you. Today we're going to talk about creativity and effectiveness or effectiveness and creativity. Now this topic comes from a dear friend of mine, wonderful bass player down in the Maryland area. When you say Maryland, you got to talk Maryland, D.C., Virginia, Delaware, because that's where most of the musicians evolved and where, you know, the funk circulates down there. Uh, but Chris Rose, I'm definitely going to interview him and have him on on the Entree Musician interview at some point. But I tell you what, you know, we were talking about, you know, sometimes how uh, musicians can get into a rut, whether it's the rut of a weekly gig, whether it's a rut of their band and uh, doing their tour and, you know, just run the run of the mill stuff that goes on on the road if you're touring or if you're recording. And it's just these patterns that we kind of sink into. And sometimes we can lose the edge on the creativity and effectiveness. I'm sure you've been there. And here are some disciplines that we kind of employ to keep ourselves on point and definitely want to share them with you. But before we do that, let's do this and talk about this wonderful drink, this beverage called Vocal. All of our videos are sponsored by the wonderful people at Vocal. Vocal is the only beverage on the planet which is designed to soothe, refresh, and restore your voice. If you talk all day like I sometimes do. I, I, if you can tell, I have a little edge on my voice right now, so I need to get some of this in me. <laughs> when you sing all night, you absolutely have to try vocal. You will absolutely love it. It definitely works. Go to drinkvocal.com to learn more. Get your supply. Now, let's get into effectiveness and creativity. Keeping the edge on. Uh, these are some personal things, like I said, that I, I uh, bounce back and forth with Chris Rhodes. He bounced with me. So this is our, our short list. First of all, we like to create timelines. Because when you create a timeline, you just don't coast. You know, if you say, okay, I need four hours to do this. And then me, I worked in radio a hundred years ago, but I worked in radio uh, a significant part of my professional career. And what we would do as a producer for talk shows, what I would do is uh, I would back time. Everybody is a standard. What you do is, you know, the news is happening at the top of the hour. You got three and a half minutes worth of commercials. So you would back time out from the top of the hour into the three and a half minutes that you need so what what we do is once we have a project uh, be it a recording be it a show how we're going to sync the show all of those things we would back time from the last song on to the segue so we would work it backwards so we would know exactly how to build the momentum to you know build those spots in the show that is very emotional where we're going to get the most uh, uh, response and engagement Engagement from the crowd up to the boom and to the grand finale. So build your show backwards, you know, back time the show and see what interesting moments you can come up with instead of saying, OK, we're going to start with this and we're going to go forward. That's just one of the ways to uh, maintain your effectiveness and creativity. The other one is uh, talking about scheduling, staying on that, is to uh, employ shorter studio times. Now, of course, there are times when you're just in the studio and you're pretty much exploring, especially in songwriting sessions. And, you know, those are your brainstorming. So you got to set some time aside to let the muse kind of walk in and, and, and give it that play. But when you're recording, instead of... Uh, going six hours in the studio why not four hours or even better yet two hours so everybody comes in ready to do it hey we got two hours to get these three songs down and boom everybody's just on their point because they know the clock is running in the era of home studios basement studios garage studios whatever you know uh, the clock has been thrown outside because you know we didn't want to pay the high prices for some studios so we just said yo I got my own Boom, boom. But then with that time comes effectiveness and efficiency. So put the clock back on the wall, okay, and go for a shorter studio time and 
you will become creative. You have to because you've put yourself on a deadline. Another thing about uh, being an effective entree musician, I think it happens, but the art, the emphasis on networking has been really lost. I mean, really creating. I'm not talking about followers on Facebook. I'm not talking about followers on LinkedIn. I'm talking about creating dialogue, real engagement, real relationships, as many as, as you can possibly stand without going crazy. Everybody's not going to be your true friend, but what can you begin doing for others that you would wish someone could do for you, especially if you're traveling from city to city? What can you do for someone? What can you offer them knowing that a band is coming to your area? What perks can you set up for them? And uh, don't worry about the reciprocation because you continue to sow, you're going to reap a harvest. The next one for creativity's sake is to stand out. How can you stand out? And I don't care if that's your attire that you wear on stage, if it's the guitar that you wear, the color of your drum set. I mean, what is it that you can do to stand out? Maurice White, Earth, Wind & Fire, what they did was they employed a kalimba. So every time you heard that kalimba, you know you were not just listening to any other funk band. You were listening to Earth, Wind and Fire. Uh, what did uh, the group? There was a group called Slave back in the '70s, early '80s. Just a touch of love. You might remember that hit. Uh, but they put a bicycle horn on a stand, and it became a signature sound uh, to kind of set them apart from everybody else. There was a funk group, Zap. Roger Troutman, God bless him, may he rest in peace. Uh, who used the talk box? Funk grooves out the wazoo, but without that, uh, that, that, that talk box, that distinguished them as Zap. So they stood out. What is it about your group? What is it about your artistry that makes you stand out from the rest? The next item is of equal value, and that's not wasting a day. And I'm talking to those entree musicians who, you know, have to gig on the side because they have a day job. And you come home, and I get it, you're tired, you may have worked, you may have been caught up in traffic or, you know, commuting back and forth to different areas and whatnot, but can you carve out 15 minutes a day with your bass in your hand while you're decompressing and running through some scales? What is it that you can do to say, okay, all I got tonight is 15 minutes, but I'm going to do this, A, B, and C. Put it up on the refrigerator and say, this is what I'm going to do because this is all the time that I know I have, and this is going to keep me sharp. This is going to keep me thinking about the focus of the work that I'm doing because I may have a job, but I am doing some meaningful work. Try it. It absolutely helps you out and it helps keep you working toward the goal that you're after in your heart. Another aspect of maintaining your creativity and effectiveness is learning a new instrument. I mean, why not? You don't have to go through four years of training at the community college down the street, but hey, if you have the time, why not go for it? But what I'm talking about is learning, giving you another opportunity when you're writing your song, when you're producing, you know, your project is, you know, how does the guitar player do this or arrive at this chord? You know, what is it that the trumpet player is doing? What is the posture of a trumpet player? So when you're thinking about that entire process of arranging uh, your song, you have another dimension to come from. So learn a new instrument. It only increases your vocabulary. Finally, Teach what you already know. You are amazed at how much you learn as you share what you have with others. And it could be the art of production. It could be a piece of software you've just purchased. It could be teaching your instrument. It could be doing what I'm doing and teaching from experience and sharing what I employ to other people. And so share, teach what you know, because that helps keep you sharp. It helps you reevaluate yourself. Yeah, is that right what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've used that many times or that definitely works. Or seeing a younger musician and saying, hey, my friend, here's something that you should employ to help you. You know, um, 
it's interesting because I really appreciate publishing and and copyright and and how many people call me as I you know because I have like a passion for the changing issues in copyright or what's new as uh, in publishing or publishing administration or uh, how big companies come and eat up you know the publishing of the little smaller companies and, and all that stuff it kind of fascinates me but I'm saying that because people call and ask me questions about it and so I share Share what I know and obviously post it on the Entree Musician and that becomes another vocabulary and a larger dialogue for me. So with respect to that, teach what you know. Now I'm sure that I've left a hundred things out and Chris would be happy because I included most of his stuff <laughs> in this video. But what can you add? You know, what is it that keeps you sharp, keeps your creativity going, keeps you effective and to the point? Would you add them into the comments below? Would you also like, subscribe, and share this video with everyone? Would you join us at TheEntreeMusician.com? The dialogue is growing. The buzz is spreading. We want you to be a part of it. My name is Jerry B. I am The Entree Musician, and so are you. We will see you next time.